with good success rates and uh, yeah, one big happy family. Awesome, awesome doctor. So again, as we said, we're talking about how to improve IBS success. If you guys, if, if any one of you have any questions regarding IVF and you're going to be doing IVF soon or considering it, you can please put it in the comment section. So we'll take a few questions at the end. Um, but for now, doctor, how do we improve um, the success of, 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 an, of IVF? What is it that we can do? Yeah. So Leanne, if you ask that question, it can be for two reasons, either that you are planning to do IVF and you want to maximize your chances of success or you've had an IVF cycle and it failed. So obviously it's always better to uh, prevent something as to try and treat something. So normally when IVF is unsuccessful, there's always uh, three things that we look at. The problem can either occur uh, before the embryo formation, other problems can uh, occur after embryo formation and we need to look at all of those individual uh, reasons why it fails um, and obviously the third one is at the time of the embryo transfer. So maybe with that in mind, let's go and see what problems can we encounter prior to an embryo um, formation. Um, and then see how we can improve that. And <clears throat> when we stimulate a patient for an IVF cycle, <coughs> excuse me, we always assess the ovarian reserve of the patient beforehand so that we know how uh, our, our stimulation can be uh, um, uh, tailored for, for that specific patient to get the maximum effect. And yes, we want eggs. And if the patient has got a low ovarian reserve, uh, we know that we may get less eggs and that may be a problem. I'll get back to the egg reserve a little bit later because that's also the reason why we sometimes have problems after the embryo formation in terms of embryo quality. The other problems may be a technical difficulty when we uh, retrieve the eggs and that may be because of a patient, for example, with endometriosis and the organs are stuck together and, and it makes it difficult to get to the ovaries. It can also be due to fibroids, uh, distorting the uterus, making access uh, uh, difficult. Uh, another problem before embryo formation may be due to fertilization problem and that's where we have to look at the male. And we should never forget the male because up to 40% of couples trying to have a baby, there may be a male uh, problem and uh, fertilization of the egg is obviously important in that regard. So the men, although there is not overwhelming uh, um, evidence of it, um, should always uh, stop smoking because it's just in general good health. And we see often marijuana use, uh, that obviously mm. can affect excessive alcohol intake and then also obesity. So for men, it's also important <clears throat> to be within a, a normal weight limit. Yeah. If we look at the problems after embryo transfer, that would be the embryo quality. So now we've got the, uh, <clears throat> the embryos, they formed but the embryo quality is bad. And that may be because our patients are older and uh, um, the older the patient is, uh, the less eggs we expect, the less quality embryos we expect, the less implantation we expect. And even if they do fall pregnant, we expect a higher risk of miscarriages. Yeah. So, I want to stop there for a short while and just talk about egg reserve, your ovarian reserve. And I think every lady should know what the egg reserve is. When you go for your general checkup with your gynecologist, every year, still not planning on having babies, uh, ask your doctor, please do an antral follicle count. That's where we do an ultrasound. 
assessing the ovaries and count how many follicles we can see. That gives you a fairly inexpensive, you're already paying for the ultrasound anyway, uh, inexpensive way to assess how many eggs you've got. Okay. If the doctor find it difficult to count, there's obviously the blood test that you can do, the anti-malarian hormone blood test, and that would give you also an indication as to whether you're still good um, to wait to have a baby or to uh, speed up things. Because remember, IVF can't cure age-related fertility. And that's yeah. a misconception that patients have. They come at 40 and say, I want to do IVF because I'm struggling to fall pregnant and now everything will be honky-dory. And it's not true. So we have to get our patients to come to the clinic sooner than later. Uh, yeah. And one of those sooners will, will be when your doctor is able to pick up that there may be a problem. Okay. Then just quickly, I'm just going to go through the, the, the framework if, if it's okay, Leanne. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, the, the next thing would be uh, when we place the embryo into the uterus, uh, the receptivity. So uh, we have to make sure that the uterus is normal in terms of size, in, in terms of shape. We have to make sure that there are no fibroids and especially the fibroids that are pushing into the cavity. Those ones are notorious uh, affecting our results that mm. that's sorted. And then obviously, if you're a patient that had transfers before that failed, then there's the ERA test. The ERA test will help us to identify your personalized window of implantation. And by doing that, we can improve your chances of success with the next okay. transfer. And the last uh, little bit of my framework is the embryo transfer. It needs to be done by an ultrasound. We sometimes still hear from clinics or patients coming from other clinics where no ultrasound was used when placing the embryo. Obviously, uh, ultrasound guidance, placing the embryo is important and obviously soft catheters, etc. But those are more technical things that yeah. our viewers may not be uh, familiar with. Okay, that is great. Um, do you mind if I ask a question? I've just got a question from one of the viewers. Yes, 100%. Okay, for a patient with multiple embryos frozen, is it best to transfer more than one embryo at a time to increase chance, or is it better for to just transfer one? Okay, Leanne, um, you're now talking to the conservative doctor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, believe, I believe in a single embryo transfer, but obviously it will depend on a few things. First of all, how old is the patient? You know, because as the patient in, uh, is, uh, um, age uh, increases, um, according to our guidelines, we, can't, we can transfer more than one embryo. And if they are 44, we may even do five, six embryos. And the reason for that is because we know as patients get older, there are too many abnormal embryos. So yeah. that way, by placing more embryos into the uterus, transferring more into the uterus, is to increase your chances of success. But I believe if you assess a patient properly, you do whatever you can to improve the quality of the embryo. As per my framework, yeah. you, you make sure the uterus is receptive, and you do a good transfer, then your chances of success is very good doing a single embryo transfer. Okay. Other thing is also, if you have a genetically tested embryo, so we can test the embryos before we uh, transfer it into the uterus, then we also tend to put back less embryos. And, and I understand patients uh, concern regarding this topic, you know, um, some of our patients are unfortunately not uh, lucky in terms of that they are good quality embryos and they have to look at an egg donation program, but they yeah. now have had 
three, four, five embryos um, transferred into themselves with their own egg, didn't work. And now they try and catch up a little bit and go with an egg donation program and then transfer to embryos. And remember, if you go with an egg donation program, you increase your quality of your embryo and yeah. actually you should then transfer less. Yeah, because um, um, that was actually my next question. So thank you for, for, for going ahead with that. Because um, I was going to say, I, I did a talk a while back and what the doctor had mentioned was, it says if you, you know, you, it's a, your 30 year old you basically, or if you, if it's your own eggs that's been frozen and you're using it, that was frozen when you were 30, it's as if you are 30 and now doing IVF. So um, we always encourage women to, um, if you are busy working, you know, you got your career, you're sorting out career, have a look at going into actually getting your eggs frozen. Um, am I correct, doctor? Yeah, Leanne, that's what's called uh, social freezing. But, yeah. you know, I think it's um, social uh, sounds like it's uh, uh, something that you can just uh, discuss over a glass of wine and then you decide with your friends, let's freeze our eggs, which yeah. is not true. You know, I think each and every patient has got uh, their own certain um, uh, cir circumstances which will yeah. determine when they want to start with their family or not. And that's yeah. why I said it's important that you know your ovarian reserve because yeah. if your ovarian reserve is still good at the age of 30 and you want to wait until 35 before you start your family, yes, you should be okay. And then yeah. freezing of your eggs uh, uh, will most probably not be uh, on the cards. But if you're the um, chairman of the uh, big corporate company, and you're uh, busy with your uh, uh, career and you are now 33, 35 years old and you don't plan on having a, a baby until the age of 40, it can make the difference between having a baby and a sibling for that matter. Because remember, when you do IVF, you, you have the ability to freeze those embryos and keep them. I always say it's kind of like a, a insurance policy, you know. <laughs> uh, you, you never want to use an insurance policy, but if yeah. you need it, you need it. Yeah, yeah. I've got one more, one or two questions more, doctor. Um, Junita Fantunda says, is it good to change clinics after three failed transfers? I've read that in some cases it's suggested to change clinics. <laughs> Is that a trick question? <laughs> I, I, yeah, so I, I know I'm, it's not just, um, we don't want to mention who the clinic is or no, anything no, no. like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. she's saying, is it, is it, would you suggest to change clinics? Yeah. Maybe I have it, you know? Yeah, again, it's a, a, a difficult one because one needs to have all the information yeah. as to how old she is, what is the quality of her embryos, um, is she happy with the way her doctor explained to her why there was a failed uh, 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 previous no. transfer? Why did it fail? Um, was a transfer done without assessing the cavity and then only when it failed, then the doctor looked at the cavity? You know, there, there are lots of uh, um, yes. reasons. But I think yeah. if we always try and be open with our patients, give them all the information so that they can make an informed decision. So if a patient that's 44 and she's got six embryos and we've transferred those six embryos in three different settings and it still hasn't worked and it wasn't tested, you know, then I don't think you can blame the doctor because yeah, he gave yeah, you the information, yeah. he gave you the, the statistics as to what the success rate will be. And, yeah, absolutely. But, but if you're not comfortable with your doctor and the answers that you get, yes, a second opinion. And a, a second opinion is never um, to change clinics, you know? Yeah. And when a patient of mine wants a second opinion, I have no problem with it. I always just say, please give me the doctor's name so that I can send him all the inf relevant information 
so that that doctor can make an informed decision because it's difficult for a doctor to start off with a new patient that has had a, a long history with a different clinic. Yes, yes, absolutely. I think it's a, you've answered that question so well, doctor. Um, we can't just always blame a clinic or, or anything like that. I'll never blame the doctor or um, or say something that the that the patient did wrong or something like that. You have to obviously look at all the facts. Um, just try to get back into my questions. Um, sorry about that. Um, sorry, I just want to find the. There's quite a few questions that came up now, and I just want to have a look at it. Uh, here we go. Sorry, guys. Okay. Um, the other questions was, um, can you still test frozen embryos? Yeah, so um, that's the other um, important thing to discuss with your patient uh, before they start the IVF cycle, whether genetic testing, PTTA, is indicated, first of all, and whether that's a service that uh, uh, we offer um, uh, to our patients. Normally, the best is to test the embryos uh, directly after the five days of culture, and then freeze them because if you now have to test frozen embryos it means you have to thaw them mm. biopsy them refreeze them and then if they are normal you have to thaw them again so obviously yes our labs are good and they the embryos do survive etc but we don't want excessive manipulation of the yes. embryos but if you, for example, uh, have 10 embryos and you've had three transfers and none of them worked and you, you don't want to have another seven transfers not knowing, it is an option. But it's something, again, that we discuss with patients uh, uh, before we go ahead to do something like that. And sometimes, okay. especially if they want more than one baby and it's... Uh, um, uh, and they have only three embryos left or whatever, then we would not rather suggest do another cycle because if you only have three embryos, you, you're never going to get, well, God does beautiful things, but uh, three embryos, three babies is not always possible. Yeah. But then uh, we would suggest maybe, listen, let's do another cycle. If we get enough normal uh, embryos and test them and get normal embryos then we don't have to test those others but obviously if you've got an excess amount of embryos of seven you don't want to specifically then do another cycle uh, to know whether they are genetically normal yeah okay i've got um two last questions doctor is is it possible to implant the embryo with a fibroid of five centimeters yeah so fibroids, I always explain to my patients, it's like buying a house and therefore position is very important. You know, it's position, position, position. So if that fibroid is uh, more on the outside of the uterus, uh, it's usually not a problem. But if it is definitely pushing into the cavity, it is usually a problem. Now okay. a five centimeter is, is our cutoff, uh, whether it can affect the uh, transfer, yes or no. If there's nothing else that uh, caused you not, uh, to, to not have success, then sometimes it is uh, indicated to go and remove that fibroid. But yeah. we do not have any studies to show that if we remove that fibroid, that it, you will have a successful outcome. So yeah. again, it's, if it's a single fibroid or maybe there are more, smaller other fibroids and, and, a, and a small fibroid pushing into the cav cavity is more important than a big fibroid within the wall. Okay, perfect. Um, then I've got a question from Lizelle. Um, Lizelle, you are, she's asking, do you perhaps know if they have reproductive immunologists to help with multiple implantation failures due to immune problems? Lizelle, I've actually got a great professor um, that I normally have talks with, so please, if you can DM me, 
um, I'll give you their names. Um, and then we've got the last one from Tanden T Tatenda. I'm 36 with an AMH of 3.21. I have two transfers with two different clinics. Um, the first clinic was a fail and the second clinic ended up with a chemical pregnancy. What can I do to increase my egg reserve? But I, I, I only got seven and on the seven, only two made it. Um, maybe she's talking about the, the quality. So you can't increase your egg reserve, but the egg quality is that what she's talking about. Yeah. Um, Leanne, to me, it, it sounds like she's got polycystic ovaries, so AMH, three point something, you Two said? One, yeah. Yeah, two. So, egg quantity is not her problem, but egg quality. So, I think it, um, it is a problem with the stimulation, um, the way she was stimulated, because if you only have seven eggs in a patient with polycystic ovaries, it sounds like it's a little bit... Uh, less than what we would expect. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit tricky to get the right regime in terms of uh, the stimulation, uh, but then afterwards, the quality of the embryos is, is obviously important. And she only ended up with two. So it will be interesting to know what happened with the second cycle or the second clinic, how many eggs and, and how many yeah. embryos. But again, how old is she? Yeah, and she, okay, there's no yeah, age, yeah. she's 36, 36, sorry. 36, yeah. yeah. So at the age of 36, uh, we know that, uh, if I remember correctly, about 50% of embryos will test abnormal, you know. Yeah. So if you only have two embryos out of a cycle, uh, that's not enough, you know. So you yeah. need to have a better stimulation program. Uh, the cycle so that you can get more eggs, more eggs, more likely to have more embryos and then more normal embryos. Okay, awesome. Um, again, I just want to, the one last thing I'd say is Monyan Diwa, you can also DM me and I'll give you the details of that professor. Um, one last question from Lazal is how thick should the lining be for transfer and can a thick, a too thick of a lining cause failure? Yeah, so um, we, we get pregnancies or pregnancies can happen from six, in, six millimeters, sorry. Um, uh, and what the um, optimum thickness is is, 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 is debatable. But we normally try and get a lining to get to eight millimeters and, you know, up to 14 uh, millimeters is fine. Um, that should not be a problem. Uh, you must just be careful if the lining is thicker than uh, 14 millimeters, for example, it may be that there's a polyp inside the uterus that causes it to be that thick. Yeah. And obviously that needs to be addressed before an embryo transfer. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Doctor, for your time. You've answered so many great questions. Um, and um, yeah, thank you very much. The Doctor is from Vitalab in KZN. And if anyone wants, anyone in the KZN region is looking at doing IVF or, or want to see Doctor and do, um, you know, talk about your infertility, please contact him. I will put his details in the comment section. Um, but thank you again for your time, Doctor, today. It's a pleasure, Leanne. Enjoy your weekend. You too. Bye-bye.